Before we get into it, loosebeers.com. I'm touring in 2024. The shows kick off uh, in uh, April, the first half of April in Melbourne. I've got uh, a bunch of shows in Melbourne. Then we've got Sydney in May, Newcastle, Gold Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warrnambool, Shepparton, and Brisbane is announced very soon. I just got the dates. They'll be on sale. Stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 330. Sorry, we're not doing that anymore. We've we've run out. But guess what? In three episodes, we'll have angel numbers, angel numbers. Every uh, every manic pixie girl with green hair is going to go. Oh my god, this is the this is the lucky episode, the money episode. So episode 333. That's uh, I mean, what should we talk about? We should talk about cryptocurrency. Poke it up, poke it up, poke it up. <laughs> Um, guys, this is a very special episode though, by the way, um, because this is the final braces episode. This is the last one on Friday. Next Friday, I get them off. They come off. I'm so excited. I'm going to be in my final form. How exciting is that? We love it. Um, I, dude, I got, I got pranked. Okay, fine. I've talked about it before, but the prank came out. Okay. Misfit Minds, they got me. To catch you up, and and for fuck's sake, it has half a million views. <laughs> they got me. And you know what annoyed me about it? They called me a retired prankster. Retired? You just wait. I've pulled off something big, and it's coming. Um, so, if you don't know, to catch you up, Misfit Minds, they're a prank group, and uh, they really stitched me up. I was doing a gig at Kings of Comedy. This is like the first gig in Melbourne in my hometown since the surgery. It's a really important one for me, a very healing and restorative one of like, oh my God, I've been through so much, but it'll all be worth it because I'll get to go on stage and do what I love. They, unbeknownst to me, uh, actually orchestrated a prank with the guy that runs the room, Simon Hughes, the dog, uh, and they told me to arrive late. And while I was, uh, while the audience was filing in, they showed them a photo of me and they said, when this guy gets up on stage, do not laugh. And it's 100 people, and fuck, they got me. And the prank came out, and it's it's really good. It is so brutal to watch. Like, watching it again, I was just reliving it again. And fuck, it was rough. They got me so bad. But even that prank, how long does this video go for, Keelan, in total? 10 minutes, 22. Okay, minus their way too long sponsored part. How, much, how long does the video go for? <laughs> um... It goes for about eight minutes. So are you actually yeah. on stage, it goes for six minutes. Okay, so in real life, I was on stage for about 10 minutes. <laughs> so they edited out the vast majority of it, and it was so much worse in real life. I actually have... Uh, I filmed it myself just coincidentally because I film all my gigs. I've got it on my on, on an SD card somewhere, and I just ca- I can't even bring myself to put it on a hard drive. <laughs> it's It was so bad. But... Watching the prank, um, watching the prank back, it made me feel a lot better about myself because in that room, the because I'm so tall, you can tell how bright the lights are. Like if you look at the video, I'm fucking glowing in there. I'm lit up. I look radioactive. I look like uh, Mr. Burns in that one Simpsons episode, right? I can't see. I can barely even see the front row. So in my head, I'm just like looking at lights and then four people staring into my soul with a sullen expression. Um, but watching it back, <laughs> I'm actually doing great. All things considered, I'm, I'm cracking people. I, I'm, I'm watching the whole audience just cover their mouths and try not to laugh. Made me feel a lot better about myself because, uh, you know, obviously it felt awful in the moment and then you find out it's a prank and then part of your brain goes, yeah, but why was it so easy for them not to laugh? <laughs> you know, like maybe they weren't even trying that hard, but watching the video back... They're trying very hard, which is good. You know, uh, a little update about it as well, because I talked about it on the podcast before, but I actually ended up going back the next week because I, I said to Simon, first I said, fuck you, you dog. Secondly, I said, you have to give me a real gig because I can't have that. Because that's the thing about it is for about a week after, um, I knew it was a prank, but my soul didn't. <laughs> You know, like I just had the feeling of bombing and I couldn't get rid of it. So I ended up going back to the same room and fucking crushed, annihilated, did great. But the girl behind the bar, she worked last week and saw the prank. And when she saw me walk in, she was like, 
I can't believe you've come back. Not in a, like, I'm shocked that you came back. Like, I'm surprised that you came back. In more of a, like, I can't believe that you respect yourself so little that you've come back here after what they did to you. <laughs> because here's the thing. Really, really great prank for me, for the people that pranked me, for the people that watch it at home, for you guys. But it was not explained at all to the, to the actual audience. All they were told was don't laugh at this guy. They weren't told that it's for a video. They weren't told that we were friends with this guy. <laughs> they weren't told he'll be okay with it and he'll actually be stoked because he'll get to make a video out of it. All they saw was, oh, let's be really mean to this guy that we don't really know. And the bartender was actually... Her mind was blown when I came in and I said, no, no, this is good because I do videos too. And she was like, oh my God, I just thought that this was Simon bullying like a guy that really needed a spot. <laughs> and and upon reflection of going back in my memory of how it went, that's exactly how it would have looked. So I'm talking to this girl behind the bar. She's like, I can't believe they did that to you. She was like really upset for me. Apparently throughout the prank, right? Because I was booked for 10 minutes and I think I got through like nine minutes of my set. Um, apparently Simon kept running up to the Misfits boys, and you can see this in the video, begging them to stop the prank. <laughs> Please stop. He's had enough. No, he's already dead. He's already dead. Stop hitting him. <laughs> and they refused until he actually ended up giving me the light. And when you get the light, when someone flashes a flashlight at you while you're on stage, that usually means it's usually like a, a polite, hey, you've got a minute left just in case you as the comedian got a little bit lost. But because of how poorly I was doing, and I also knew that I had about five minutes left in my set when he gave me the light, what I interpreted as of, I interpreted it as, uh, hey man, you're doing so poorly that you need to get the fuck off stage. You're ruining my comedy night. And now, and now not only am I on stage bombing worse than I ever have, I'm also thinking, oh fuck, I'm never going to get booked at this room. This is one of the best rooms in Melbourne. I'm blowing a huge opportunity right now. <laughs> and so I was explaining this to the girl behind the bar and she goes, apparently, because uh, all the staff were worded up about the prank, no, everyone went downstairs. They couldn't watch it. They thought it was so mean and so brutal watching it happen that they all went downstairs and every now and then one of them would come back upstairs and would go, oh my God, is he still going? <laughs> Fuck. And then they would go downstairs and she would beg other people to swap with her so she didn't have to watch it happen. So she had to watch the whole thing. I think also talking to Simon and the other comedians... It was very apparent that they thought I would tap out after two minutes. <laughs> and I think that's maybe what a reasonable person would do is they would go, you know what? You guys are hating me and I'm not doing very well. So I'm going to respectfully just bow out. You're like the next person. Me, I'm not like that. I'm, I'm, I go, oh, you don't like me? Good. Here's another eight minutes. You know what's also funny about watching this video back is in that video, um, there are, I believe, three suicide threats. <laughs> <laughs> and what's really funny is that's maybe about 30% of them that were said. <laughs> Which really, you know, that's that really goes to show um, what comedy really is. It's like, give me the attention that I want or I'll kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, here's the main thing that the bartender girl told me, right? So she's telling me all of this. And then uh, and then I go, um, yeah, the audience felt really bad. Because here's the thing, what happened uh, that you didn't see, what happened when the audience was filing out, dude, every single person, normally after a gig, if you do well, most people will give you a smile and a nod. Like if it's, if it's my fans, they'll want a photo, they'll, they'll, you know, get a poster or whatever. I'll sign their boobies. That's all fine. But if it's a gig where no one really knows you, if you do well, the audience will give you like friendly nods. Like a couple of brave people will come up to you and be like, oh, I love that mate. And this joke was really good. And then, and then uh, if you do, but if you do really badly, people will just kind of 
ignore you or they'll just shuffle past. If you had an average set, they'll just walk past. They, they might give you like the, you know, when you walk past um, like a mid forties white guy in the street and he'll give you this one. Like the, <laughs> the, the awkward smile, the smile that, that, that doesn't touch his, his eyes. No, <laughs> you get a lot of those. That's brutal. But this one never experienced before on the way out. Every single one of the 100 people made a point of walking up to me, shaking my hand and sincerely apologizing. (laughs) They felt so awful because they didn't understand that it was for a video because it wasn't explained to them. So especially I think because the Misfit Boys, they just had phones. So they didn't have big cameras coming. It wasn't like cameras came out and they were like, oh, it must be for like a YouTube video. It just would have looked like bullying <laughs> to a guy that they don't really know. And another thing you can see in the in the video is towards the end when they reveal that it's a prank, right? I walk off and I'm like very upset because I've in my reality, I've just had the worst set of my fucking life. And then I walk off and then the audience goes absolutely mental cheering clapping whooping hollering and i still don't know it's a prank so i actually think that they are celebrating that i'm gone so i am like i'm gonna walk out i'm like fuck this this sucks but then go to the bit where just before this keelan go to the bit where um simon brings me back up on stage and play it with sound okay so i walk off here and i'm fuming all right, this the Misfit Boys are celebrating. I tried my best. Yeah, I said, I, yeah, that's that's a really good final line, isn't it? <laughs> I've been Lewis Spears. You guys have been lovely. I tried my best. <laughs> All right, so here Simon's up, and now I'm like, oh my god, that's something's different. Now he brings me up back up. Okay, so now look at me when he brings me back up. Okay, so here I come. Okay, pause it. I just think that Simon has done this to me for fun and because Simon doesn't, at this point, didn't make videos. So at this point, I'm so fucking upset (laughs) at Simon. I'm like, this is not a funny prank. I'm actually fuming because I'm like, why the fuck would this room runner do this to me? What an asshole. I came here to get paid and to do a good set after all this time off. And he's fucking done this for fun. What a douche. And hit hit play. I'm really angry, mainly at Simon. And now that I've seen the Misfit Boys, I'm like, oh, okay. That's a good one. That's a good prank. Yeah, this is, uh, I actually can't watch it. Pause it. That's enough. (laughs) Horrific. But here's the worst bit, okay? So people on the way out, this is how bad the audience felt because I didn't, they didn't understand that it was for a video. Um, and also this happened over a month ago as well. So they probably all just, they're not going to see this video. So they just have this memory of bullying a guy, right? So on the way out, everyone felt so guilty that they apologized to me one by one. I was stuck there for an hour while they were going, I'm so sorry, you did so well. You know, I'm sorry. You know, I actually thought you were really funny. I actually really struggled to laugh, struggled not to laugh. This was really good. I'm so sorry. Sincere apologies. The bartender girl the next week tells me that halfway through my set, uh, an older couple left and they were so upset. And the bartender girl goes, are you guys okay? And, And the guy goes, this is an absolutely horrible thing to do to someone. (laughs) And we actually feel morally against bullying like this. And this is actually a really mean thing to do. And we feel really bad about being forced to be involved with this. And we don't want to take part in this. And she goes, no, no, it's just a, it's just a prank though. And they go, we understand, but these types of pranks aren't funny. They're just bullying. And then they, (laughs) they left. (laughs) So they don't even get to see me be okay with it. Like in the moment, it just felt like bullying. (laughs) Oh, fuck. That's so funny. So check that out. And I think I've got a video up on my channel of like me doing a proper reaction to it. What a great prank. And uh, I'm going to have to get my revenge now, aren't I? 
Um, all right. So I get my braces off on Friday. I can't wait. I'm trying to think of like, what, what, what's, what's the last thing that I do with braces? How do I give my braces the fit, the farewell, the send off that they deserve? I'm trying to think of any videos or anything that I haven't done. You know, here's, here's something that I, that I, um, I'm trying to think of like everything that people with braces go through. I've, I was thinking of like, what have I done? I've done everything. The last, the only thing that I haven't done um, is I haven't kissed another person with braces and gotten stuck together. That's the only thing I can think of, of like uh, a braces uh, ride of trial, you know? Unfortunately for me, I am 30 years old. Uh, and I would imagine that most people uh, in this country with braces are teenagers. So I don't think that I'm going to be ticking that off anytime soon. <laughs> but that's probably the only thing that I can think of. Of like, what's the what's the one thing with braces that everyone kind of talks about that's like a funny thing? And it's just like the pain, the lisping, the not being able to bite into apples, all that stuff I've done. The only thing is I haven't got my braces locked to a, to to my uh, my girlfriend that I had in high school, you know that did that ever happen to you or or like a kid you knew in high school? I have a story about that. I didn't have braces, but I have a story that I can tell you about a friend of mine. Yeah, so a friend a friend of a friend of mine, she had a boyfriend and she had braces, and so did he, and they were like making out in her bedroom. She must have been like fourteen or fifteen, and they got stuck together. <laughs> And apparently they got stuck together for like 30 minutes trying to unhook themselves. And the parents were family friends, so they didn't realize that they were like dating. Uh. So it was one of those like high school relationships that when they were together, they were rabidly horny. And then they would just wouldn't see each other for months because they lived in different places. Um, but I remember, yeah, they were stuck together for like 30 minutes and then they had to come out and walk down the stairs in tandem <laughs> with their faces stuck together. By their braces. What have you got? I, I think I've told this story on this podcast before, but my friend Jackson, when we we're about 16, his girlfriend had braces. Mm -hmm. And during, he, had, he this was in America, um, he had a foreskin, had is the word there, a first ever blowjob, his foreskin gets caught in her braces. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. What? And then he, oh, he had, oh. Ah! He had, oh. <laughs> He had to, like, he got caught. I don't know. I don't have braces, but it got caught. He had to rip it, the foreskin out, and now he's circumcised. <laughs> he had to go to the hospital. <laughs> Hang on. So, so he had to, so if she didn't circumcise him, she damaged it so much that he had to get a circumcision yeah. late. Yes. <laughs> That's, well, I mean, was he happy with the result overall? Oh, I doubt it. Cause I didn't, I, I wasn't, um, I like with my surgery, I would never choose to go through this, but now that I have, I can look in the mirror and go, that sucked, but at least I look better. Right. Can he look down and go, that was a horrible, awful experience, but at least. Yeah, possibly. I haven't asked him. Ask for a couple of before and after dick pics. <laughs> yes, or, or, 16 hang on. year old. How old was he in the before? Yeah, 16. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> ask for an after and then a subjective opinion. <laughs> I'll ask her. Does um, so obviously she he got stuck in her braces. Does that mean that? Because <laughs> I know when I get food stuck in my braces, the only way to get it out is to brush my teeth. Oh. So, <laughs> so did she have to like wait thirty minutes to drive home with foreskin stuck in her braces? Where's my toothbrush? Fuck, I don't know. I don't know all the details, but yeah, it's pretty. That's awesome. See, th th where where you and me are, are friends differently because if that happened to my friend, I would know all the details. <laughs> I would sit him down for well, a day and I, go, give me the play-by-play. -play. I was told through another friend and it was kind of like a hush-hush thing. So I'll just tell 10,000 people right now, shall I? <laughs> Jackson got circumcised by his high school girlfriend. Yeah. That's good. I mean, isn't that, uh, is she Jewish? <laughs> was his was his uh was his high school girlfriend actually an extremely orthodox rabbi? No. Cuz they 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 do that some of them. Have you heard of that practice? 
I of have, the, actually. A friend of mine, as a teenager, had to get circumcised for religious reasons. As a teenager. Uh, well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about oh. some, some uh, incredibly small, minuscule, almost insignificantly tiny minority uh. Uh, of, of uh, Jewish rabbis uh, will, will do it with their mouth to an infant. Really? Yes. This that's is real. This fucked. is currently happening. That's fucked. <laughs> so fucked. Yeah. But he, so your mate got circumcised as a teenager. Yeah, you know him actually. Who? I'll bleep that. Yo, I didn't even know he was Jewish. Yeah, he's Muslim, but yeah. <laughs> is a girl? <laughs> a bit of a uh, Keelan's on dial up here. With those jokes. Yeah, that one was fun. Uh, oh, that's that, that's really funny. I got circumcised late. Did you know that? No. How old were you? Um, I was a toddler. Um, I I'm one of the only people on earth that was circumcised for a reason. My no. um, I had one of those. Uh, uh, t- my my dick grew, my foreskin didn't. So I I don't really remember this, but I do have vague memories of like, because this was when I was toilet trained and everything, so I could wee. I have vague foggy memories of like using the toilet and then falling to my knees in pain. It's like a it's like a it's not super common, but it's one of the only reasons to actually get circumcised. If uh your dick grows, your, your foreskin doesn't, so you have like a rubber band around the end of your dick. And yeah, I couldn't wait. It was that tight. So I actually got circumcised late. Oh, I don't know why I looked at that. <laughs> yeah, why would you Google that? <laughs> That's just, that just, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really remember it. Um, but so I'm circumcised. Uh, so is my dad because that was the, dad got it because it was the fashion at the time. <laughs> and my brother is not. Oh, okay. How come? Just because. Oh, because he didn't need it. Medically. Just didn't need it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's a fucking, it's a, it's a unnecessary medical procedure. You know, half of men get it done in America, or mm. half of men get it done to their infant sons. It's such a weird practice. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I got mine done late, so I was a, I was a late transitioner. Um, and normally the surgery is really expensive, but if you know a good rabbi. <laughs> I didn't even know. I watched a movie the other night called Ricky Stanicki with your mate. I yeah. need to watch that. That um, Andrew Santino, John Cena, Zac and Efron. Zac Efron. They were shooting that movie, Ricky Stanicki, in uh, in Australia, in Melbourne, this time last year. This time last year. So that's so that's how I met. That I opened up for Andrew Santino when he did his shows, and that's how I met Zac Efron. Mm. Took a photo with him on his brother's phone, who then promised to send it to me, and then didn't. Should we follow up with Carl and Jackie O about that? Uh, I have, yeah, and uh, and they uh, they ghosted me. I think because um, I actually. So anyway, going back in time, I made a video about how Zac Efron turned down the photo in the most gentleman-like way. He took a photo with me, but he goes, "Oh, can we take it on my guy's phone?" We took the photo on his phone. I'm none the wiser. But then I realized that the reason why he did that was so that he didn't have to say no to the photo. All he has to do is not send me the photo. And I can't even look at Zac Efron as a douchebag because it's not him that didn't send me the photo. It's his guy. So I talked. I said that in a video. That goes like vaguely viral in Australia. Kyle and Jackie O call me, the radio show. Best radio show. Kyle's friends with Zac Efron. They get in contact with Zac Efron. He actually seems to genuinely not remember who took the photo. Um, and I ended up telling a joke about... They get me on the radio to talk about it. And I think um, I think I told a joke about the Dalai Lama uh, sucking kids' tongues or something. And then they hung up on me. And I thought you told a joke about that shooting as well that it had just happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. So they get me on the radio. That's what I said. It was a joke about the, what was it? The trans shooter? Yeah. Was it that? I don't remember the details. It was a trans shooter though. Yeah, yeah that's right. So they got me on radio to have like a, a light jocular 
um, advertising safe conversation. And I was like, yeah, trans mass shooting jokes. Nashville. That's right. I said, oh, that's, that's what I said. They go, oh, well, thanks for coming on the show. And I go, oh, that's all right. I thought you guys were calling me for a different reason. And they said, why is that? And I go, oh, I thought I was in trouble for telling a bunch of jokes last night. And they said, oh, what were you joking about? And I was like, Nashville. And they went, oh, and they, <laughs> they hung up on me. And then that was fine. They sent me the footage of the conversation that we had because they filmed their end. So I was going to make a video of it. But in the footage they sent me, they actually completely edited out the Nashville bit, took out the middle and then put back in the end. But unlucky for them, I was filming my end. So I put it back in and posted it. And now they don't respond to my texts. <laughs> so, but, look, you win some, you lose some. I don't think I'm ever going to see that that photo. So, speaking of... this is, But this... Hang on. Sorry. Yeah, this no, is why I need to watch this movie. Because then... Because, you know, you don't want to annoy people, especially people that are much more successful than you. So, when you text someone, it has to be like, for a reason, a nice short thing, and hopefully something nice that isn't stalkerish and weird. So this is my one text that I get to Andrew Santino a year. I watch his movie and I go, great movie. Well, I can I can help you write this text because I've seen it. Okay. Great movie. Love the circumcision scene. Okay. And, and we're talking about circumcision and Jewish people. Yeah. There's a great Jewish uh, circumcision scene. Th- I is, learned a lot about good. Jewish culture from this movie. <clears throat> right. But not everything because <laughs> I told you something new as well. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Yeah. Um, this is good. So I'll go... Great movie. Love the circumcision scene. Um, It reminded me of the time I got a photo with Zac Efron (laughs) and his brother took the photo and said he would send it to me and then didn't send it to me. What's up with that? Lol. Shrug emoji. (laughs) Do you think you could text Zac Efron and his brother and ask where that photo is? Yeah. The specific date they'd have to type into their iPhone is this. Yep. Um, and then if he doesn't respond, then I start sending follow-up texts and I go, Hey man, what the fuck's going on? I'm never getting that photo. No. (laughs) Do you reckon he even took the photo? He definitely took the photo. Yeah. The flash went off. I I know that it happened, Yeah. but I'm never going to get it. It's over. It's all over. Um, now another thing I needed to talk about uh, this week is, uh, this is very important. Um, I, uh, Obviously, we're transitioning at the moment where Keelan's going to start taking control of the podcast a lot more, which is great, and we love that. Um, And that's why we're trying to grow the Patreon. Now, obviously, when things get handed over, sometimes wires do get crossed. And that's okay. That's part of the learning curve. That's fine. And it's no one's fault. Last Sunday, um, I uploaded the podcast uh, and I put it on YouTube on time, scheduled, thumbnail, title, everything. I thought that I had done the audio version on Spotify properly. Um, I didn't. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe actually, maybe Keelan was supposed to do that. I, so my, I couldn't figure out what was going on. But anyway, what I'm saying is the audio version was a few days late and... I won't count it as a late episode because the the YouTube version came out on time. So we haven't missed one and it's not late. It's just a technical difficulty. <laughs> However, obviously we did have a bit of a suicide pact going on <laughs> with the show. And, and a few people did commit <laughs> to the fact that, well, it, you know, a few people did commit, and but some few others did pledge that if I missed an episode that they would actually throw themselves off a bridge. Um, The Westgate here in Australia. Now, obviously not everybody (laughs) lives in the Westgate, um, but it it would, and so they need need the Westgate, so they can't throw themselves off the Westgate. But it would appear that um, a certain cargo ship captain was uh, a listener of Spearhead Sundays. uh, And obviously because... (laughs) <laughs> there's not much internet on the high seas, he would probably be, the, probably be the type of guy to just download the episode manually from Spotify um, so that if the episode didn't come out on time, he probably didn't understand that it actually wasn't late. It was just only on YouTube. And now, um, thanks to Keelan's fuck up, this cargo ship captain has actually taken out an entire bridge. 
um, in protest of the of the the Spotify version going out late. Um, <clears throat> And I just, I just wanted to say that Keelan profusely apologizes for that mistake and the lives that it has cost. Very sorry. Yeah. Um, and also what I would like to say to the captain of that ship is, I understand that we were late, but talk about an overreaction. <laughs> you know? How, how are people going to get to work now? <laughs> how annoying. How crazy is that fucking cargo ship video though? That's nuts. And I'm loving the discourse on Twitter as well. People are saying that the that it was like a terrorist attack or that it was done on purpose. Like people are going, oh, look, why didn't he just steer out of the way? Do people understand the size of a cargo ship? Like, I don't think... I actually don't think that human brains are uh, equipped to understand how fucking... Not only big, but also heavy a ship like that is. Like, what we're looking at is... Like, 9-11 was a plane going into a building. This is a city block going into a bridge. This is like an entire city block somehow floating, driving into a fucking bridge. That's how heavy these things are. It's like an apartment building that floats. So people are going, oh, why didn't he just steer out of the way? It's like, yeah, boats don't work like that. Holy shit. Can you believe that only, I think it was like, Last I checked, six or seven cars or people were on the bridge. I think they had a mayday, so they evacuated the bridge. Plus, it was like it was it like four a.m. or something. So not many people are using. One twenty-eight a.m. One twenty-eight a.m. Man, that's not even that late. Fuck, that's so crazy. What a horrible accident. That's fucking horrific. But I, but already the conspiracy theories have started. Like, oh, didn't he? Like people are just basically going, oh, didn't he see the bridge? <laughs> Like, currents don't exist. Like, you can just uh, put a fucking city block, make it float, and then also have good handling. You know? I don't, I don't think they're very maneuverable. It's not a fucking jet ski, you idiot. And then other people are going, oh, why didn't they just build the bridge to withstand the impact of a cargo ship? Yeah, let me know when they figure that one out. Yeah, it's like en- engineers are supposed to... A factor in what if a, what if a cargo ship <laughs> drives fucking head first into the into the main support structure of the bridge how do we build our way around this you can't it's impossible um yeah sometimes things are just accidents and people are like i'm looking for patterns i'm seeing i'm detecting things and themes but there ain't none That being said, I do know for sure that it was an orchestrated attack um, by an avid listener of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. And you know what? Fair enough. (laughs) Very sorry about that. I I fixed it though on Monday. Yeah, good. I bet he feels silly now. (laughs) (laughs) Because I thought it didn't go up and I thought, oh, Lewis Lewis said he was going to upload it. I won't overstep and I won't message him about it. Mm. I don't want to annoy him. It actually was some kind of error, I think. Because when I went to check, it had been scheduled for 4 a.m. Sunday morning. It just didn't go up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I think uh, it was like, it was just processing for a a really long time. But um, yes, sucked into that chance cargo ship. Yeah, that's that's Keelan's fault. Sorry. (laughs) Um, Social media in, uh, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Florida... They are banning anyone under the age of 14 from accessing social media at all. This is one of those laws where I'm like, this is a great idea for the betterment of humankind that I have no idea how the fuck they're going to enforce without violating everyone's privacy. It's one of those ones. How do you prove you are the age you say that you are without having to upload like... IDs, passports, social security numbers, all that kind of shit. How do they? How are they actually going to enforce this law? Because it's one thing to have the law. How are they going to enforce it? Or are they just put? Or are they just going? This is the law. Facebook, figure it out. <coughs> DeSantos previously v- vetoed a more restrictive version of the bill that would have banned social media accounts for kids under sixteen. That bill also required Florida residents to submit an ID or other identifying materials in order to join social media. Mm. So they're not doing that. Right. So they're time. just they're just putting it on 
Because that, that, that seems like, uh, it's, I think it's a good idea. I don't think any kid under 14 should be using social media. I think it fries your brain. Um, and there's also just predators and shit like that that are on it that kids have no idea how to avoid. Um, but it's also just going to be like, it seems like it's just going to be like, yeah, you guys figure it out. You're not allowed, you're not allowed to have 14 year olds, Facebook, you, you police that, which is also impossible. But it's like the porn ban as well. Uh, where, uh, was it Florida as well that did that? It's Texas. Texas, right. So Texas have uh, banned pornography unless you upload an ID uh, to prove that you are over the over the age of 18. Which, look, again, it's like, like I think that's a good idea that is uh, you can't enforce without violating the privacy of everyone who is following the rule. So that's, it's like one of those laws where like, yeah, I don't think absolutely children should not be able to access pornography but also, I don't want to be fucking uploading my ID and my passport and shit to a porn website that are, you know, those websites can't keep child porn off their own fucking website. How are they going to keep my identification safe? The minute they start linking identification with porn use, you know that China's going to take all that shit. 100%. Absolutely. Every foreign government in the world is going to know exactly what pornography you can, you're looking at. And I guess, you know, they probably already do. I know that the UK are also introducing a law or trying to in- introduce a bill similar to this where you'll need ID to watch porn. Wow. It's, yeah, it's said in t- to order, sorry, it's in order to protect children from accessing it. I mean, those are like, that's, that's, uh, those are those laws where it's like, okay, this is obviously a, a great idea, but enforcing it is, you, you can't really do it without hurting people and violating privacy and all this kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah, what's, what will cause more damage to humanity is kind of the, the, the question. Uh, children being able to watch porn, like all of us have. Uh, or um, every single adult who wants to access adult material uploading their fucking ID to the to every single website. Because would that mean that like you got to upload your you'd have to upload your ID to OnlyFans if you use OnlyFans as a customer? It'd be everything, every single website. Does that mean that like all of those those Reddit boards that have porn on them, right? You, does that mean that Twitter? would have to ban porn or I would have to upload my identification to Twitter to be able to use it at all because there's porn on the website. I did hear an interesting conversation on a podcast yesterday about this where in Texas they're banning porn, but X, as in Twitter, formerly, formerly Twitter, yeah, um, has like the most amount of porn accessible on, than any other website. Yes. So does that mean X is going to get banned in Texas as well? Well, it should, I guess, because that, yeah, that is, that's another thing. It's like the more that, you know, it's, it's not particularly good, but the more that porn stars and porn get fuses with social media, right? The, it's what's, what's happening now is, yeah, like the blurring of the lines of what actually is a porn website. Like Twitter, I would not call it a porn website, but it has, it is full of porn. And that's where, like, when I look at, um, sometimes I'll see, like, scrolling through TikTok, I'll see slideshows that are just, like, Twitter usernames. And it confused me. I was like, what the fuck are these usernames? And uh, all the, it was the tens of thousands of comments going, these are the best ones. This is what I use, blah, blah, blah. So I typed one in. They were all porn, like, compilation accounts that just post, like, the best amateur porn or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, if I'm seeing this on TikTok, that's how kids are accessing porn is by going on Twitter. They're not even going to Pornhub anymore. Mm. Or um, what did I go to? Um, 10.com was the first porn website I ever went on. And then it was then it was like you porn. And then <laughs> Pornhub bought all the websites. <clears throat> I'm off porn completely. I don't look at it anymore. I'm, I'm imagination only. It's very bad for your brain. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very bad for your brain, and uh, the imagination is so much better. 
It, but you know what it is? It's like, you know what it is? It's like reading a book. If you haven't read a book for fucking ages, yeah. if you've only just scrolled through TikToks and shit, you haven't read for like years. And then and then you pick up a book, you're like, oh, this sucks. I can't do this. But you have to sit there and focus and, and really try and picture in your mind what's going on. And then, you know, after a while that works. But yeah, I'm I'm compl- I'm completely off point. I think I think if I was to really like look at the last year, I reckon I've looked at it under thirty times, max like thirty. I would say like maybe. I don't even know if I would look at it once a month. I'm com- I'm just completely off it, and it's so much better because I used to when I was when I was a fucking from the ages of like fifteen. Probably to like 21, it was like a, it was like a multiple times a week. It was like fucking every single day when I, when you're a teenager. And then by the time I got to like 18, 21, it was like multiple times a week. And then it was like that for fucking years. But in like the last, I'd say the last four years, I'm just com- pretty much completely off it. Um, cause yeah, it's, it just, it kind of just sucks. And it's like that, that gross feeling after is, is never fun. And then, it, and then it gives you porn brain, for sure. Of just, like, the more you look at it, the more you look at everything through, like, a sexual lens. It definitely fucking rots your brain. No, but I'm, I'm, pr- I'm pretty much completely off it. Um, and it's good. It's, def- it's definitely fucking hard, though. Because it is just, like, you know what it is? It's almost, it's borderline a fucking sleep aid for, like, most people. Like, oh, I'm really tired, but I can't sleep. I'm going to jack off, and that'll work. Mm. I think that's how a lot of people do it. And you know, you know when it's the only time because one day I was just like, I think I'm just gonna stop looking at it and see what happens. And it, I don't know. I feel like it was kind of hard for a for like a, a a month, and then I just completely lost interest in it. Um, however, you know what? It is really hard to not look at it when you're in the fucking hotel room by yourself for a week, and you just. Cause that's 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 when you really that's when when your your metal is really tested. Like, you, cause I'll like when I went to Perth, I was swimming every day. I was going to the gym every day. I was eating really well. Then you put me in a hotel by myself every night in Perth. I was fucking getting McDonald's every day. I wasn't swimming. I wasn't going to the gym. The laptop with Pornhub was being opened. <laughs> Benefits of not looking at porn. What do we have here? Well, I was gonna say this is very sounds true science, but. I I find yeah. Is this proven or if or you what? if you watch porn like in the morning or like calm in the morning, mm. you tend to have like just a lack of motivation for the rest of the day. Yeah, I feel like a lot of a lot of guys I know don't necessarily have social anxiety or or whatever. They mm. just they're just addicted to coming. Yeah, I think it definitely takes away that desire to talk to anyone, um, especially women. And that's like, it's kind of a, it's kind of an indictment on men in general, isn't it? Oh, I've come. So what's the point of looking at a woman? What companionship? Eh, don't need that. I've come. That's not good, is it? What else do we have? Yeah, this is a this is an article that's definitely written by someone who's not a scientist. Rewire your brain. What does that mean? What does that say? Can you read it? No. Nah. You can actually change your brain. Evidence suggests that with time and abstinence from porn watching, your brain can revert to how it functioned before porn. Well, I don't remember because I was 12. <laughs> yeah, isn't that fucked? Isn't that fucked? Like, this is, this, is, see, this is why they'll never figure out a before and after with porn because there's not a human alive on earth that's never looked at it. You know? It's fucking crazy. Yeah. You'd have to you'd have to go to the Amish. But even then they've got phones and shit now. What else do we have? Gain some clarity. <laughs> if you've been struggling with this, you are probably aware of the brain fog. It's kind of what I was saying. Yeah. By watching too much porn. If you stop watching, believe it or not, that brain fog goes away. You might find that your head is clearer and you can think more quickly. I mean, I definitely noticed that with phone use in general, like if I use the phone heaps, I'm I'm half retarded. Yeah. And then if I don't look at it for a while, especially at night, if I if I finish my day in bed scrolling through my phone, I will wake up and feel hungover. And or if I start my day by just a wake up, grab phone, scroll, 
I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> like I've, the, it's the worst shit. You wake up and you just fill your head with other people's thoughts, other people's experiences, other people's opinions. And then you get out of bed and you're like, fuck, who am I? Get in be- better physical shape. We know that this one may be a correlate or not a cause, but many people report that when they lessen the amount of pornography they watch, they tend to get in better shape and lose weight. It only makes it, only makes sense less sitting in front of a computer and more exercise. That one's just, I mean, how how, how long are people looking at porn for? That's a coincidence. <laughs> just sit there and goon for eight hours. <laughs> um, I just kind of list yeah. Them off. Rekindle relationships, decrease depression and anxiety. Read that one. Sadly, depression and anxiety oh. are common friends of porn addiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We often tend to try and cope with sad feelings with yeah. destructive memes. Bit of a sad memes, way. not memes. If you start watching porn, you may find that you're filling that time with things that make you happier. More socialization, reduced social anxiety. It's what I said. Improved, Improved self-esteem. self-esteem. Uh, maybe, I don't know. More sexual satisfaction. Uh, that's interesting. Increased enjoyment of everyday life. Gain back your motivation. I think the motivation thing is big. I think that's definitely true. Yeah. The, the less you nut, the more you do. Probably because, and this is again, sounds true science, but like that release of, is it serotonin or dopamine or something? Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. don't release that first thing in the morning, you, you're able to kind of it's the whole things. It's the whole thing of like, you should start your day doing the hard thing. Not that hard thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what it is. Like you're often like, the human brain is always looking for shortcuts because that's how we've survived. You know, you expend as little energy as possible means you need less resources to survive basically and you're probably going to be in less risky scenarios that's how we survive but now that food comes in a fucking packet that is almost like not serving us at all it's actually harming us that kind of natural uh bent towards doing the easy thing so you actually want to start your day with doing the difficult thing uh like going to the gym or fucking reading instead of looking at your phone or whatever there's this app called brain buddy that helps you quit porn i've just found Maybe we could right. get sponsored by them. Brain Buddy. And how does it how does it help you quit porn? It sends you a notification of Um I think it here's a picture I think of it's a an cat app instead that, of a pussy. That just helps you kind of just mindfulness, know, hey. Mindfulness. I think it's just like <clears throat> I'm trying to think uh I think honestly, I didn't really um I didn't really like quit it or like be like, Oh, this is a problem. I think one day I was just like, This is fucking gross. I like, uh, I just, I, I just like looked at what I was doing and I was like, this is great. Not necessarily what I was watching. I was never watching like particularly weird stuff. I just was like, this is kind of a fucking gross way to live my life and be doing a lot. I'm going to stop doing that and just fucking chill out. I, yeah. I think it was just like disgust at myself. <laughs> that really, that really got me. I was like, what am I, why do I do this all the time? I don't even really enjoy it that much. Because like when you're a teenager, you're like, whoa, boobs, what the fuck? And you're also like ballistically horny. And then you hit your 20s and you're like, this is like a fucking gross thing to be doing all the time. Plus also, I think it is like once you, once you like form proper relationships and friendships with women, it it's like it takes a lot of the, um, the mystery away f- uh, from... Like, what is, what is that? And what's that like? Like, once you actually start talking to women and, and you're like, oh, they, they're just actually people that, that, you know. And that's something that happens when you're like, hopefully in your teens. But I feel like so much of this porn um, abuse, like just porn addiction rather, is just from like, yeah, men that are just very lonely and they don't know women. And then they don't know women because they don't know women. And it's like a self fulfilling prophecy of like i'm lonely so i don't talk to people because i'm lonely and then i get lonelier and then and then they jack off so much they have no motivation to leave their house or talk to women and that's the end of the episode (laughs) i hope that's what you came here for don't be coming um Oh, and before we get out of here, come and see me live, loosebeers.com. The comedy festival starts uh, next uh, next week. Uh, so loosebeers.com, I've got Melbourne shows in April. Then I am in Sydney uh, in May. Then we've got 
Newcastle, Gold Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warrnambool, and Shepparton, and Brisbane will be announced very soon. I actually just got the text kind of locking it in, so we'll have those up soon. Loosebeers.com, get your tickets, and also check the bottom of the screen. These are all my patron supporters. How good's that? Thank you very much. Uh, Sarah Gurr, we love that. Uh, Austin Cooper, what does that say? Super butt cunt man? Right, well, um, yeah, thanks, man, for that. Sean Corby, Isaac Robinson, Jimmy, Doug and Katie. Doug and Katie, hey, <laughs> hey, no no account sharing. <laughs> Charge them double. Doug and Katie, I'm going to Netflix you cunts. How dare you? You better not be sharing passwords. <laughs> Bradley Wilson. I'm Pol- not going to do Polished this. jeans. Okay, that's enough. Bye. Have a shit one. Asher.